Hey guys, welcome to my shop. Um, regular subscribers and viewers, you know who I am and uh, you haven't had enough yet, so you're still here. But for those of you that are new and coming in, most likely because you're seeing something about a kit guitar or you're hearing about this on another platform from another person, maybe even the kit uh, provider, um, I'm Ken. I am known as Paul Miro Junk Pow Guitars. Who's Paul Miro? Well, Paul Miro is a, a play on words for Palmero, who is someone who works on palm trees. And I've been doing stuff with palm trees for most of my adult life now, or at least half of it. So, if you're thinking vain, egotistical, show your neighbors what you got by plopping a palm tree in your front yard, yeah, that's me, or some version of it. But... I started building guitars for a reason. Um, I think I'll give you a link to Margaret Garrett of Mr. Airplane Man telling you what that reason is right up here. I really don't want to rehash this whole thing, but I'll tell you what. I have built guitars out of this wind-blown shack I'm in. I've built cigar box guitars. Um, I built guitars out of coffee cans and I have built guitars out of old license plates. Now, a lot of people do this. Um, I think there's more people not building, there's more people building cigar box guitars now than there are not. Anyway, that said, what I am known for is I'm known for number one, my instruments being very individual, so they're they're geared to put in the hands of an artist. So the artist goes, this might as well have been made for me because it was. Um, and secondly, my instruments need to be really durable because if you're building this stuff, it's novelty stuff. No one is going to do a whole concert with one of your guitars. It's going to be something they pull out to get crowd interest, take you back to roots and music, things like that. So anyway. My path has led me into arch top guitars. Um, like this one. This used to be in a sun baked shop in a guitar uh, shop in Ventura, California. It was stripped down, it was missing everything on it, holes here and everything. Anyway, I picked it up and I individualized it, made it work, and believe it or not, but this guitar has been played by a lot of different artists, even somebody who has been, or maybe I don't even know, has been charted on Billboard, uh, the blues chart. So I've been really fortunate. Now, a wise old luthier told me, you know, Ken, you are I'm spending a lot of effort into picking up these old silver tones and arch tops and uh, uh, K and harmony stuff that wasn't really top end to begin with. They were kind of Christmas present type things for uh, your nephew when you wanted to bug your brother. You give him the guitar at Christmas, they would go through it, learn how to play, either get good with it. Some people uh, started off on a silver tone. And, and ended up being hugely successful, but face it, a lot of these things ended up in an attic somewhere, dried out, and then I come into the picture. So if you pay attention to my channel, we're always talking about necks, we're talking about this. In fact, I did a primer on a buyer's guide to junk arch tops or a primer on junk arch tops. I'll give you a card to that up there. Anyway, this person told me, Ken, you're putting a lot of effort trying to make something dependable that wasn't dependable to begin with so why don't you skip all that stop being afraid to get into a good guitar and artsy it up like that's what you are you're an artist don't be afraid to call yourself an artist and focus on what it is you do so that said I took his advice and I got a kit guitar oh by the way this is not a Gibson ES 175 it's a pretty slick knockoff 
of a Gibson ES-175 produced sometime in Japan and then I would bet the 1960s it's still got the open book Gibson type headstock. Anyway, so I went out and bought a kit that looks like this and we're going to use the Texas junk pile. I'll give you a playlist of how that one was built right up there. And we are going to compare this kit to that guitar. And we're going to start by, um, I'm going to introduce you to the kit. I did a video, I hate giving you all these cards, but get the backstory. I did a, an episode about what progressed me to, to where I bought the kit and I opened the kit on that episode. But we're going to start this playlist by introducing this guitar. Uh, once we have a look at it, then we're going to cover how to sand it and, and prep it and make sure everything fits together. Then we're going to put a really special finish on it that's really crazy, something only I would do. Then we're going to figure out how I would individualize the guitar. And you might want to think about that. Start individualizing your guitar because you can take a kit and work all day long on it. And guess what? Nobody is really going to think that this is Eddie Van Halen's guitar. Rest in peace, Eddie. You're the best. But make your own stuff. Make your own art. And I'm going to give you a few hints on how I do that. Now we're going to take a look at the hardware. We're going to put the thing together. And now we're going to go find somebody that can play it. And this is going to be a no holds barred thing. If you want me to review something, I'm not being paid to do this or compensated, but I do have a goal. I want to start off with something that's dependable so I don't have to waste my time bolting necks and fixing cracks and, and doing all that to get to ground zero. This way I can start off hopefully with something very solid and dependable and then I can work on individualizing it and that's really where I want to be. So that said, uh, let's open up this kit and see what we got. Okay guys, the moment has come. We're finally here. Um, we got a little housekeeping to do. The first thing I need you to know is these people, Guitar Kit World, them or anybody else, I haven't taken anything off these people. There are no freebies. I don't want to have people thinking that I am getting free kits so you can be the victim of my sales ploy. You know what? Whatever is in here is in here. And you want to remember, my measurable on what's in here is this. I know what the Texas junk pile is. I know what I paid for it. I know what I can sell it for. And I know what's in between. So I'm not going to get all fangirly over what's in here or what's not in here. It just is what it is. And remember, we're trying to get to a place where we start off with something really solid. And if you're in the market I'm in, God bless you, but that's where we want to start. Again, one more time, that neck pocket on this thing right here with the Florentine cutaway is very attractive to players. And this thing, I can go out and rake leaves with it. I can give it to anybody. It's my favorite guitar to hand out in band crashers. Anyway, let's get back to the drum roll if there is one. Okay, here we go. I've cut the box open, and you're going to see what I see. The first thing I'm looking for is how is it packed? Did somebody cheap out on the shipping? Because we all know if you ship a guitar, it's expensive. Okay, the first thing I'm noticing is it's a gold package. Some people like that. Personally, I don't like that. Unless I've got a 1983 Toyota Celica that's worth $1,400 and I put $3,000 in a gold kit on it. Okay. Um, I'm liking what I'm seeing. You know I like to use the bigger potentiometers. The knobs are good. A lot of metal here. A lot of metal here. I do not like these bridges that sit on studs in the top of the guitar body. But there's some preference stuff. There's even strings in here. There's knobs for the potentiometers. I'm not going to open this up, but the tuners appear to be okay. Uh, everything has surrounds ready for me to make my metal. 
truss rod cover. Wow, it's even got a, a cord. Yeah, there's the bridge. I don't, I don't particularly, I like using rosewood or ebony wood bridges, floating bridges, but again, there's a bracket for the pit guard. Is the pit guard protected? Oh yeah, it's got film on it. There we go. So the hardware appears to be good. I can pick that apart all day and whatever, but I don't recall ordering the gold package. I think it's the highest end one, so uh, they did me a favor shipping that to me. All right, now let's get down to what we're here for. Ooh, the body. You know what, I'm going to pull the stuff out and put the box top back on so we can not just distract it along the way. we we'll use this as a table. And, um, well, I think from what I've seen so far, they're, they're doing pretty good. Now, here we go. Can you see that? Let me flip it around. There we go. Okay. Now there's some work to do here, some stuff to smooth out, but I'm noticing right away is that when they cord this stuff out, they didn't chip anything out, so everything's intact there. Um, again, I want to be able to make sure that you can see what I got going on here. There we go. I'm not used to this setup. Um, okay, the F holes are painted. There's no binding. I like this binding. I have an idea about what I'm going to do with this guitar, but the binding is solid. I don't see it separated anywhere. It's got some nice purfling. It's alternating one, two, three, four layers of purf purfling alternating black and white before black binding. I'm not seeing anything sticking up here. I'm not seeing anything cracking away here. I don't see any cracks or splits. Let me make sure that you can see this as we go. I need to get closer. There we go. That right there is supposed to be that way. There we go. Yeah, there's no separation anywhere. Nice smooth job, nothing sticking out. That saves me time. Let's look at the bottom. Yeah, there's no splitting along the edges. That is actually binding, it's not paint. I, you know what, I like that body. Um, let me reach across the camera here. It is a tad smaller than the body of the Texas Jump Out, but that's okay. That's a, that was a big, big body guitar. There we go. All right. I want to look at this part right here. This is very thin right here. I want to make sure that that's not cracked. Everything seems to be okay. There's nothing split. There's just a tad bit of sanding to do here, but... The main part about it is the binding job is done nice. Now, I'm going to paint this body. I think I got some ideas, and I can bet you can figure out what those ideas are. So I got to figure out, do I want to tape this off? Do I want to cut some type of a protector? Or do I just want to paint off and, and do a binding? You remember I did a binding job on that old Archcraft arch top from the 30s that Troy Murrah has now. But anyway, um, I'm really happy with this. There's not anything rough breaking out around the holes. Again, this bridge is not my favorite kind of bridge that sits in here on the studs, but all I got to do is measure out the scale and use some Fred McDowell relic wood or some Rue Lacey relic wood or something and do what I do. But yeah, the hardware is all here, but now we got to get to the part that I'm worried about, and that is the neck. The neck came in wrapped up. Frat markers are there. 
There we go. It's got abalone frat markers on the front. It's unfortunate those will get covered up with some junk. I do. Um, the truss rod is there. Everything's good. Um, I don't have a headstock that violates anybody's copyright. I think everybody knows that this is not a Gibson ES-175. There's some work to do on the knot. Um, we know the trick about putting a guitar pick right in there and then getting the knot down. So there's going to be some work to do on the knot. A tad little bit of of sanding to do, but it's it's pretty much ready to go right there already. Again, forgive me, I'm used to the camera angle being a little bit different. Um, let's get into fine detail stuff. I'm going to run my fingers down. And you know what? Tad tiny bit of frat work to do. I think most of that's from temperature changes. You know that things shrink and metal doesn't shrink. But the fretboard is nice. The neck is really nice. Now, let's get into the first thing good luthiers look at like I would know. I'm going to take my piece of metal here. We'll put it right behind the nut. And I'm trying to move this. I swear I'm going to get one of them really big heavy rulers that just sits on there and that way you can balance it and whatever. But there doesn't seem to be. I could put a fret rocker on this, of course. But I don't, I don't feel any abnormalities here. Let's take a look at the scale here. That'll be easy to lay out. There we go. Now, the part I am really concerned with. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. I like this neck pocket. You see the way this is configured? Um, some of these guitars, like that old Craftsman, had a V notch and it, kind of like a mortise joint. This is square. It's supposed to fit right down in here. Now, it is tapered. If you look at the neck, it's tapered. So, there's a tad bit of work to do right there. Sanding, nothing. It, it, it looks okay. Of course, we're going to round this off. What I'm going to be worried about here is if this slips in here and it's slopping around and moving all over the place in a couple different ways, or it hangs up. You want to remember, when you're doing this part right here, this is very thin. That ends up being protected by this layer right here. But while you're fitting this, I want to know if this is sloppy. That's the bottom line. If this is not sloppy and all these little places where they've left out binding and stuff, if this all fits together, this is a keeper. So we're going to put this in here. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that... We don't put it in out here and slide it in because it won't go in. Do you see that? Again, it's tapered. This is tapered. So I'm going to go in straight over the top and drop it in. Just like that. You want to remember, the neck is going to pitch forward a little bit like this. And that's what gives you that rise to get you back to where your bridge is supposed to be. We've got a lot of room for bridge work back here now. I, I hope you can see that. But, how much does this thing wiggle around once we drop it down in there? There's no side play. The only play is, and there's not that much play here. In fact, I'm going to be ta careful taking this off. Now, we've talked about student instruments where we've had really thin... Uh, fingerboards here and that leads for a really low action I don't like that not much resonance in the guitar but this is snapping together great and once that's glued in I mean whoever rough sanded this did a great job so I wonder if I can put these two side by side now I should have prepared a little bit better here and got this strap off of here, but oh well, you made it this far. So, 
flip this around. The difference here is on the Texas junk pile, the net comes up to the top. On this one, you see, it doesn't want to come out of there unless it's right over the top. On this one, it's going to sit down that much, but I don't know the detail on that. I actually like that one better because you can see the binding okay. Okay, while we got these side by side, I want to, I want to talk about a couple of things here. First, the economics of things. If you find one of these, again, if you're finding an ES-175 and you're going to do this kind of stuff to it, it better be tore up from the floor up to start off with and you probably should have somebody you're building it for. I found this in a shop, abandoned, nobody wanted it, it was stripped down. Everybody knew that it was not an ES-175. But if you start looking for one of these and saying, hey, you know what, I want one of these in any condition, guess what, you're going to pay a price. And I think the price you would pay for one that's tore up is probably somewhere in the vicinity of what you would pay for one of these by the time it was shipped to you. Again, it's a hit and miss game. I'm kind of left to what comes to me, what's available to me on the market. So, I'm kind of looking at the quality of this one. I didn't have problems with the Texas junk pile because, again, of the configuration of the neck. I'm getting it out of the way if you hear it. But this one, I think the only issue I'm going to have with this one is worrying about that old trap of, well, is it too nice? Do I want to do what I do with it? So I may just throw it on the floor and get some dents in it or cracks and fix it or whatever. But the main thing, the main lesson here is this neck is going to glue up. Everything is going to fit. There's very little, little sanding to do. It drops right in. And as I look down and run things over it, it's not pitching this way. Everything is uniform, and in fact, to get it out, I have to pick it straight up. If I try to pull it forward or something, and that didn't break. Again, so it drops right in. The fit on this was perfect out of the factory. I can't ask for any more than this. So, I'm going to put this up. I'm going to hang it on the wall and get some ideas. The bracing in it is nice. It doesn't get anything in the way. It's beefy where it needs to be. There's a block, runs all the way down, ties the top to the bottom, and this appears to be solid wood and not plywood. All right, that's it. I would give this a thumbs up. Where are we at? There we are. Thumbs up on Guitar Kit World knockoff of the ES-175. All right, um, it's all there. Uh, looks pretty good from the onset. We're going to learn more as we go along. Again, the next episode is going to be, we're going to start taking a look at how things fit together. Uh, do we have to do any sanding? Do we have to do ma any major repairs? Are there any stains, any weird things that we need to work through? Then we're going to look at um, putting a finish on this thing that's very unique. I'm going to get you into the world of using alternative materials, stuff that goes back to the days of violin makers, if you can believe that or not. We're going to use violin technology on this guitar. Then we're going to watch all those guitars slide off and hear them crash to the floor. But then we're going to take a look at pinning stuff together, looking at what the hardware looks like. And wrap it up by bolting it all up. What does that take? How long does it take? And you're going to get a look at what does it take to put one of these together and, and not be intimidated by the kit. So at the end, we'll find somebody to play it and hear what it sounds like. And then you can make some decisions about whether this is for you or not. Hey, if you want to see this playlist, make sure you subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. That way you'll know when one comes out. And in the end, I'll put all these episodes together in a playlist. And I think... Um, hopefully, if the quality is good enough, this uh, Guitar Kit Factory will make this available across their platform. So again, I'm Ken. Thanks for watching. Give me a like if you like this. And we're fixing to get to work on this kit guitar.